Welcome to Get Better Basketball Live. I'm Coach DeMarco, and in today's episode, I'm going to give you a complete breakdown of how the Philadelphia 76ers incorporated a 2-3 zone to keep the Celtics off balance in Game 1. You're not going to want to miss this episode, but before I jump into it, Make sure you hit that like button down below, turn on your notifications, and subscribe to Get Better Basketball on YouTube for more great video breakdowns. Another Get Better Basketball Live is up now. Coach DeMarco here with Get Better Basketball Live, and in this episode, we're going to see how the 76ers use a 2-3 zone to keep the Celtics off balance throughout the basketball game. They also mixed in their man-to-man defense, but this zone was used throughout the game to keep the Celtics off balance. And one of the things I noticed is that the Celtics were often in their five-out offense. Now, that can be effective against the zone, but you have to do a nice job cutting into the middle and taking the space that they're giving you. See right away in this first clip, as I bring it back, there is a lot of space in the middle. Obviously, Williams is going to roll. Tatum's is going to try to make that pass across because what they're trying to do is get two to play one, and now when this player rotates out, the idea is you can get that pass to the corner and then you can get a Williams cut. So they do have a design that can attack this zone, but they struggled to utilize it effectively throughout the basketball game. So as the 76ers went to the zone, they kept the Celtics off balance. Take a look at this first possession one more time at full speed. The Celtics do have some options here. I love that they get two players to defend one, and that's Tatum right up here at the top, and no surprise that they do that. But the 76ers are going to almost force a turnover on this possession, and it's going to keep the Celtics off balance. We're going to see other possessions, especially late in the game, where the Celtics had a difficult time. Now, I talked about those middle cuts, and we're going to see one from Brogdon here on this side of the floor in just a minute, and this can be really effective. The thing I want to mention as we watch this clip again, though, is the Celtics make one pass up to the top. They make a pass to Tatum. Would love to see a ball fake or something into the corner. They're trying to cut away this angle. They're going to they're gonna show, and then they're going to back off, as we see a lot of teams do in 2-3 zone defense. They actually could double Tatum here if they wanted to, rotate out and rotate down. That could be a mismatch for Williams in the paint. But they're actually just going to show and then they're going to rotate back. Now, this is a good middle cut, but Tatum throws that pass a little bit too soon, and I think that it's telegraphed a little bit on this particular possession. I think as the Celtics go back and look at film, they'll say, yep, good job cutting into the middle here. But if he ball fakes it and this defender drops up the top, they can just step into a shot. And that's Derek White, who shoots well for the Celtics. So they can take advantage of some of the things that Philadelphia is giving them in the zone. I also like the idea, if they are able to hit this middle pass, is to be able to go high-low with Williams. So they do make a cut. But again, these are two possessions. And in both instances, the 76ers are getting their hands on a basketball, making a deflection, and taking the Celtics out of their comfort zone. Now, this is a quick clip here, but I wanted to play it because the Sixers do a nice job taking the Celtics out of their rhythm. And shots that I feel like normally fall for the Celtics just weren't going in. And I think that, you know, you see here, Horford has a pretty good look in this situation. It was a pretty quick three. And one of the things I recognize in these clips is the Celtics are not really attacking the middle. With exception to that first, that second possession where they did try to get Brogdon the ball in the middle, they are all out on the perimeter. They're not making cuts. We will see a clip momentarily where they get a cut into the middle and a backdoor off of it. So the 76ers zone... Um, you know, they do a good enough job in it. It's a little bit of a matchup zone. They try to get out. We'll see a clip later on where where they have to morph the zone to match up with the Celtics a little bit. But ultimately, they want to be in that 2-3 alignment. And these two guards are going to defend the ball screen actions up at the top. Celtics like to do, as we saw in uh, other film, a lot of screening up here. And then they like to pop off of it. And these two defenders with the forwards are really going to be able to do a good job helping as they pop off of it. 
Now, Brogdon does a nice job here using the screen. He's actually going to come back around. He's going to draw both defenders, and he's going to kick to Tatum, who's going to knock down a three on this possession. And I think the difference we see here is that Brogdon is trying to attack the paint, and he's going to really carry those two defenders with him. I think he also had an opportunity to see White sneaking in here on the baseline. But the Celtics are still not really using anyone in the middle. I know you don't have to have someone in that spot, but I think they will in game two. I think putting a player in the middle will occupy the defense and cause them to converge, and they'll get better looks from outside. And I know that Tatum is going to hit the three-pointer in this possession, but this is a, a pretty difficult shot that he's going to hit pretty late in the shot clock. And again, you see your two defenders up top. You see they are going to have a player in the middle on this possession, uh, the Celtics, and then you see your three players down below. Philadelphia did not do this the entire game. I feel like it was about 15 possessions or so, especially a couple of possessions late, maybe a little bit more than that. Um, but they would adjust between this and man-to-man. -man. They had just gotten a deflection earlier in this possession. They forced the Celtics to a tough shot late in the shot clock. As we look ahead here now in the second half, and I showed you another clip from the second half as well, you're going to see Philadelphia is in that zone again. The only difference I saw from the Celtics in the second half is that they are going to get players that are going to cut into the zone a little bit more. We see that with Tatum in this particular clip where he's going to look to kind of dive right between these two players. And what that does, it really pulls in the defense. As I said, I think we're going to see the Celtics do a little bit more of this in game two when they do see the zone look. Also think they can go with some high-low actions if they get a player in the paint. Uh, with like maybe Horford and putting Williams underneath on the block as this defender steps up. You have P.J. Tucker underneath on the block, and I think Williams could sail him. It could be a lob, and they can get some looks from it. So I think they're going to have to make some adjustments. Uh, they did score against the zone, as we saw, but there were a lot of possessions where they didn't score against the zone, and I think that Rivers is going to go back to it if it's something that worked for them in game one. Why not come right back to it? Now, this was one of the best possessions the Celtics had in the second half. This is in the fourth quarter with about three minutes left in the basketball game. Just to show you that Philadelphia stuck with this throughout the basketball game. Tatum's going to look to attack uh, the wing defender. Again, we have our five out set up. No one in the paint at this point yet. But Tatum is going to work off the dribble here, and he's going to attack the middle. Now, Horford does a great job here. As Tatum attacks the paint, he makes a 45 cut right into the middle. So Tatum's going to draw these defenders. Horford's going to cut into the middle. And then we're going to see Smart make a back cut. These are the cuts I'm talking about that can be effective. You can get it into the middle with dribble penetration. You can get it into the middle with a pass, or you can get into the middle with a little bit of both. But the Celtics are going to have to do more of this if they're going to be successful when Philadelphia does go to the zone look. And as I said, we're going to see this in game two, and I'm be interested to see if the Celtics get more players in the middle to work against the zone, and they can make back cuts and other options off of it. Now, the last clip I want to show you is with under three minutes to go in the game, and Philadelphia is going to be in the zone again, but the setup is going to be a little bit different. And I just want to bring this back. It looks a little bit like a 3-2 zone. You would think at first glance, oh, it just could be man. You got players in the gaps. What I want you to watch here is as players cut, and we're going to see this cut from the corner, and that's uh, Brogdon who makes his cut, they're going to pass him up to the top. If this is man-to-man, -man, then this defender is going to follow him, and he's, he's touching him. As he goes by, and you can see Tucker look, looking, he's talking to Tucker, and then Tucker's going to see the cut come by, and he's going to snap his head around and recognize it. So really nice communication by Philadelphia here on this cut against their zone defense. And now you have Harden and Tucker. Now the zone's going to shift, and this player is going to get into the middle. He's going to work in and out of the paint and, and really try to find out where the Celtics players are. He doesn't want to get beat on any type of back cut or anything to the basket again. Here comes Smart. He's going to set a ball screen up at the top, and they're just going to switch on that. 
and now they're going to try to keep the integrity of their zone defense as much as possible. Again, they have those two defenders at the top, and they have the three low, and Harden's going to do a nice job here coming over to help out and force a tough shot. You can see how successful the zone defense was in this possession. This is late in the game. The Celtics are up four points. Philadelphia needs to get a stop. They're communicating. They're switching. They're helping each other. And Harden makes a nice double on the basketball to almost get a steal and force this shot from Tatum. I think we'll see more of this in game two from the 76ers. And we'll have to see how the Celtics are going to adjust in this chess match. The Celtics are going to have to attack the middle of the zone, use ball fakes, continue to get out in transition where they've had a lot of success if they're going to be successful against this zone defense throughout the series.